Yeah, I wish I wasn't a mama's boy. You know, the first time was when, uh, you know, when uh, he was in the temple teaching, and after three days, there were uh, uh, Joseph and Mary were, was looking for him, and finally they found him in the temple. This was after three days, going into, into the fourth day, and his mother said to him, "Son, why have you done this to us? We were sick. Basically, we were worried sick about you." What was Yahushua's reply? Why, he basically, he said, why, why, why were you worried about me? Didn't you know I came to do my father's business? That was Yahushua's attitude. So what, what is that guy from Trinidad talking about? You know, oh, we're going to leave the faith, leave, leave the, the, the father's business. He was supposed to be doing the father's business, which is, which is this, uh, which is this uh, ministry. He's going to leave the father's business, right? And... Uh, He's going to leave the father's business and um, there's a couple of people approaching. That's why I'm stalling. He's going to leave the, the father's business and try to make some money to build a house for his mother or buy a house for his mother. That's not the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Like I said, I gave you one example where Yahweh Shai uh, put his mother in check. Told his mother, didn't you know I came to do my father's business? Then the other uh, example was at, at the wedding. This was much later. When you, by this time, Yahweh Shah was in, in, he had already assembled, he had already assembled his uh, disciples. And uh, they was at a wedding and they ran out of wine. And the, his mother, knowing that he was special, his mother came to him and said, uh, they have ran out of wine. And then again, he put his mother in, in her place. He said, uh, uh, my time has not yet come yet. That's what he said, my time has not yet come. In other words, you know, why are you rushing me to use the spiritual power? I'm not going to use the spiritual power at your behest. Basically, that's what he was saying. So what's the point? The point is that Yahweh was not a mama's boy. That's the point. So for that guy to give it such a flimsy excuse, you know, so he can, so that, so he can tug on the heartstrings of others that are simple, simple-minded, doesn't make any sense, man. When you come into this thing of ours, you give up everything, and I do mean everything. You know, you, even your so-called family, you adopt a new family. Your new family is the brotherhood that are working in tandem with you in this ministry. That becomes your, your, your mother. Well, what did Yahweh Shai said? Yahweh Shai said, who is my, <laughs> who is my father, uh, my mother, my sister, or my brother and my sister? Them that do the will, you know, roughly paraphrasing the scripture, them that do the will of Yahweh Bashim Shai. That's what the scripture said, right? That's in the book of, uh, what is it, Matthew? I think it's Matthew, the 12th chapter. And this was when, when uh, uh, Yahweh Shai's mother and his brothers were standing, uh, you know, were standing without the, uh, uh, where he was teaching. They were standing on the outside and uh, they wanted to speak with him. Now, you see, we understand that scripture because we know that Yahweh Shai had four biological brothers. Uh, two was in the faith and two was not. Okay, the two that was in the faith was Jude and James, and the two that wasn't in the faith was Simon and Josie. So it had to be Simon and Josie's because the two that was in the faith, of, you know, right along with Yahweh Shai, they were part of his original apostles or disciples which became apostles. That would be Jude and James. So it makes sense, it would have, it would have had to have been uh, Simon and Josie's, along with his mother that wanted to speak with him. So what was the reply, you, you know, Yahweh Shai being the austere man that he is, what was the reply that he gave when they came up to him and said, look, your mother and your brothers, they want to speak with you. He said, who is my, who, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Basically, who is my family? That's what Yahweh Shai was saying, who is my family? Then he stretched out his hand to his disciples. He said, them that do the will of my Father in heaven. I Shalom. Call Laila Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity 
risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, who are my brothers? So this truth is a spiritual bond that is really gathering a kindred spirit of the house of David. So this is the brotherhood of faith, and we're being led by the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So this is not about prioritizing family goals and objectives over the first church, which is comprised of the saints, the spiritual gathering, which is the first order of business. And I remember talking to a couple of brothers over the phone, and I told them plainly, I speak to you more than my two blood brothers. So I feel more closely related to the brothers that are in the faith than the blood brothers that are in the world. So this kindred spirit attracts us to one another and to do good by one another because we can sense that spirit or the ancient spirit of the men of the Lord and those that are in the faith. So this is about putting emotions aside and walking in the spirit. Let's go here to, let's go to Luke 9. <clears throat> I think it's Luke 9 and 60. The book of Luke, chapter. <laughs> Luke, chapter the nine. <clears throat> Let's go to verse fifty-eight. Let's go to fifty-six. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Yehoshai said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. So Yehoshai understood that in order, in order to do the Father's business, to do his will, then it comes with sacrificing things of this world and having to suffer, having to go without some of the necessities, if you will. So he was living off the bare bones minimum in which to do the mission, to do the will of the Heavenly Father. So the priority of work is pleasing our Father. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Yehoshai said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. So this man from the Trinidad camp, from what I understand, was shot. And he may have passed away. He decided to leave the truth in order to pursue some sort of a entertainment or singing business to buy his mother a house. So the priority of work is the will of the heavenly father. Let's go to Luke real quick, 14. Not about burying our family members or attending a funeral. That's not the priority of work or focus. So the dead burying the dead represent those that are still in a deep sleep that have not waken up to this glorious gospel. Walking dead. <clears throat> Let's go to Luke 14. 
So nothing but excuses come from those that are not sincere. Let's go here to Luke 14 and 15. And when one of them said, and when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. So the kingdom is being prepared. The new holy righteous government is being ordered, set up. And that establishment of that government is going to be finished when Yahweh Shai comes. He's going to finish it. He's going to fully establish the throne of David and rule from the new holy Zion. And they all, with one consent, begin to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. Real estate focused. Land. Look at Yefta. There's an unconfirmed report that he was granted 30 acres. And in these days, these acres are valued at about 100000 per acre. So are we focused on real estate more than building the kingdom? Which starts with this preaching this gospel. And we know that Yahweh Shai is going to fully establish the government and the new holy Mount Zion. But the work starts now. <coughs> Let's go to verse 18. And they all, with one consent, begin to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. So these are dead men walking because they are fulfilling the lusts of the flesh and not walking in the spirit of building the temple of the Lord, preparing ye the way. Let's go to verse 20. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Focus on building a nest egg here rather than building the tabernacle of David. So these are all excuses. Working on things that are temporal or temporary and not focus on an eternal kingdom that is never going to pass away. So the mindset is eternal. Focus on the promises and doing the work and the bidding of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So these dead men walking are trying to build a nest egg and prepare a soft landing for their family or their children here in the daughter of Babylon, a kingdom of wickedness, theft and robbery, mischief, sinister deeds, unrighteous decrees, so this is showing a compliance and an agreement with death, an agreement with treachery, wickedness, abominable acts, debauchery. Let's go back to Luke 9. The book of Luke chapter 9. Let's go to verse 59. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. My father got shot or is dying. My mother is dying. My brother is dying. But the will of the heavenly father comes first. 
and that sounds cruel or rough. But the fact of the matter is, that's just, that's just a shell. The Spirit is with the Lord when we leave this body, this temporal, carnal plane. Our spirit goes to be with the Lord. So the body is just dust, dead weight. <clears throat> so to walk in the flesh is to walk in a sleep or stupefied mindset, dumbed down. Verse 60, Yahushua said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. My brother was shot. My mother was shot. And we got all types of excuses by which to delay the building of the Lord's temple. The Bible says the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So there's a small few or a small sanctuary that is diligent and that have integrity and that maintains consistency and diligence, understanding and moving in the spirit of fear and trembling of the Lord's word. No different from what Noah did. Move with the spirit of fear and trembling or reverence for Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Go to verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. So a fair, farewell gathering, a family gathering over prophesying, a damn picnic or family reunion and putting the most high on the back burner or on the top hide or hidden away shelf somewhere instead of being the first and foremost of our mindset, the meditation of prophecy and eagerly waiting the establishment of a new, holy, righteous kingdom. So if we truly believe and we're moved through the spirit of reverence of the Most High's word to please him, to do his will, and making time throughout the day by which to teach and preach, <clears throat> to edify the body, and feed the lambs daily. No different from what Yahushai did. It says that he taught in the temple daily. So this temple is the Lord's elect that are being gathered by the word in these last days. The lively stones are being packed together. For the second Thessalonians 1. Go to verse 2. Grace unto you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord, Yahweh Mashiach. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you toward each other abound. So growing, constantly building. Let's look up this word abound. Before we do, let's read this. Second Thessalonians 1 and 4. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Suffering for the elect's sake, the persecuted for the name of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's look up bounding. Growing exceedingly, we'll start there. Of our faith, increasing beyond measure. 
So this is a fruitful vessel that's meet for repentance. The elect are always doing something for the ministry, whether through alms, charity, teaching, preaching, prophesying, interpreting the scriptures, giving testimonies, always abounding. Let's look at this word aboundeth comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 4121, pleonazo, pleonazo. To do or make more. So Yahweh Shai is coming back to reap the harvest of the seeds that's been planted and yielding a reproduction of more fruit. Starting off with a seed of teaching with faith, backed by faith, and reproducing teachers that produce teachers and so forth and so on. So he's going to reap an abundance or an increase in his harvest by planting good seed on fertile ground. Believers, faithful, strong integrity, diligence. Also another word there was augmented, being reinforced with more hopeful teachings, faithful teachings, comforting one another, which create leaders and leadership, which builds leaders with strong leadership characteristics and traits. So it creates a domino effect, what we call irreversible momentum, constantly moving forward and upward towards the kingdom. Let's go to second. Let's go to First Thessalonians four and one. Sanctification and love. Ultimate love is teaching and building one another up or comforting one another. First Thessalonians four and one. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Yahweh Shai, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. So one of the commandments was, go ye out to the highways and byways and bid them to the marriage and exhort one another daily. Yahweh Shai taught in the temple daily. So wherever the Lord, wherever the elect are being gathered, and right now the main vehicle is YouTube or the internet, then that is a temple where two or more are being gathered in this word. Let's go here to Hebrews 13 and 15. Where two or more are gathered in his name, then the Lord is in the midst. So this is a little sanctuary by which we are exalting and praising his holy name and promoting his gospel. Let's go to Hebrews 13. <clears throat> Hebrews 13. Let's go to verse 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Focusing on the city of David being reestablished. Rulership. The eternal promises. And not things that are temporary here on this plane. Or on earth, but the new kingdom to come under Yahweh Shai and the men of the tabernacle of David. For we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God 
continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. See, so the fruit of our lips is helping to sustain the Lord's flock. This is the spiritual nourishment that we need to keep going. Sometimes it's one word that a brother may say during a lesson that helps to spark a lesson of edification, another video, and helps to re-energize or boost our faith. This is a daily struggle in this walk that is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. So we're building each other up. We're building the temple of the Lord. Let's go to verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So he sacrificed. The sacrifices are acceptable when we're doing this thing in faith and when we're doing it in sincerity and teaching the full truth. And these are acceptable sacrifices that we're making with our bodies and our mind, our temple. Let's read it again. Hebrews 13 and 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So this is that order that's being established. Rehearsing the righteous acts of building a new order under a righteous kingdom. So Yahweh Shai is going to set the final order, but we're rehearsing that order right now. As the brothers are coming together, being set back in order according to the doctrine. <clears throat> Apostles, elders, captains, or officers. Let's go to Hebrews 3. The book of Hebrews, chapter 3. <clears throat> the peril of unbelief. Hebrews 3 and 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So that traded that brother that left, trying to go start a singing career to build a house for his mom, he believes in this world. I mean, look at the dollar or the state of the economy right now. So why cash your bet on something that's losing value? in a world that's in decline, in decay. I mean, that does not make sense as a good investor or a savvy investor to cash your bets on something that's fallen, built after the model of a failed empire, Rome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, covetousness, worldly lust, lasciviousness, desiring the things that feed our flesh. The Lord has no pleasure in that. Let's go to Luke. Nine, and I think it's 61. Luke 9 and 62. <clears throat> and Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Looking back, remember Lot's wife. 
she missed the living the big the good life. She missed that glorious lifestyle. Living my life like it's gold in that type of mindset here in the daughter of Babylon, basting in this wicked kingdom of unrighteousness, theft, bloodshed, robbery, witchcraft, just glorying in it because of materialistic wealth, mammon, and ignoring that this place displeases our Heavenly Father because it's not built on truth and righteousness. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. So we'll close out with one more. <clears throat> So that man from Trinidad that left to go pursue a career in singing or whatever trusts in the ways of this world. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And we're not supposed to be using our liberty as a cloak of maliciousness to base in this wicked, corrupt kingdom. Go to Hebrews 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great reward. Let's read it again. <clears throat> Hebrews 10 and 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. So keep the faith. Keep the charge, moving onward and upward towards the light, this kingdom, which is being built or preached right now. Hebrews 10 and 36, for ye have need of patience. Let's read that again. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So we have a kingdom that's being built on better promises than what the Most High have done for our forefathers. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. So the time that we're reading this is in effect now, at the time that we're reading it and prophesying. This is the generation that's seeking the true power, Yahweh, and through his son, Yahweh Shai. So we know we're close because we're tapping into the timing of these events occurring. With World War III in the valley of Yahweh Shaphat, the nations are being gathered. The sea hip is being ushered in. So the recipe for the return of Yahweh Shai is being stirred up in this melting pot of Babylon where great destruction is going to come and our Lord and Savior is going to crack those skies as a thief in the night. We're close. We just read it. I'll read it again. Hebrews 10 and 37 for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Losing faith, losing confidence, a broken integrity, distress, so the faithful city of David is being established. Not rebels, quitters, gainsayers, the unbelievers. The Bible says all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Now the just shall live by faith. 
But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So the Lord's elect are being tried and tested and ultimately proven to enter into the kingdom through the righteousness of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and having that faith in him, that he is our salvation, our rock, our sword and shield, and is going to deliver us from the hands of our spoilers, our enemies. He is the one that's going to set up the order of the kingdom and occupy the throne of his father, David. The tabernacle of David is being raised up and is going to be reestablished as the new Illuminati or the illuminated ones, the new global elite, elite rulers of the new age under Jacob the birth of the nation of Jacob and the tabernacle of David, the new kings and priests of the kingdom that's being ushered in. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, or Kankadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashuala in the Bad Baba. What you got next, Lord willing? Shalom.